Hi once again everyone and welcome to another of our series of University of Houston Alumni Association interviews. I'm Tom Franklin and today I'm joined by David Burtman, Associate Professor, Director of Bands, Cheer and Dance. Did I get it right? You got it right, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever all that means, yes. <laughs> Alright, people know you as the man on Saturday evenings, Saturday afternoons in Robertson Stadium conducting our great marching band. But let's get into the man David Burtman a little bit. Where'd you grow up? Well, I... <laughs> I love that. Uh, uh, I, I grew up in Oklahoma. I was raised in Oklahoma. My, my father passed away when we were very young, 69. We were uh, moving around the country. He was opening different stores, jewelry stores. He was a jeweler. And uh, I grew up, with, but after he passed away in 69, I was five and my brother was three. My mother decided to move us back to her hometown where she was raised and, and uh, was born and raised in the tiny town of Tonkawa, Oklahoma. Middle of nowhere, 2,500 people on a good day. And, uh, but I had a marvelous upbringing in, in, uh, in Tonkawa and uh, then went to the University of Oklahoma for my undergraduate and then made the smartest decision in my life, and I mean that with every aspect of that smartest decision, came to the University of Houston, studied with uh, my mentor and teacher, Eddie Green, and then somehow was given the opportunity to give back to this wonderful institution, and here I am. When, Eleven years later, I might add. When did you first get bitten by the music book? Well... Uh, you know, it's interesting because I, uh, just recently I've been helping my mom clean out a lot of things and, and we found, well, we have, we have, we have a library of records. Uh, I just didn't realize, uh, you know, everything from Beethoven to Sinatra to Verdi. I mean, I was raised on some of the greatest music. You know, and not just the great, but you know, like great classics and then greatest music from the greatest generation. You know, my, you know the uh, Tom Brokaw book, I read that book, and I, I think sometimes of the big band and Sinatra and, you know, the, just this wonderful, um, you know, the, 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 you know, my mom will say, well, we love Sinatra, but Bobby Darren, and, you know, Bobby Darren is this guy that was this, you know, very contemporary of that uh, genre in that era. But, you know, like, died younger, and, and, and so there was all these, so I had an incredible influence, I really didn't realize it. I started taking piano at five, uh, and um, my mom wrote in this book, you know, I guess everybody had some kind of baby book or kid mm -hmm. thing, she wrote in there, David shows a, a special uh, connection to music. He seems to be quieted by Beethoven. This is what I was, <laughs> so I just read that, so I thought, gosh, I've been sort of around this for a long time, but I think the music bug really, really got me when I was in, in, in junior high. And uh, such a small school, it was such an interesting thing, you know, most of the football team was in the marching band. Right before contest, the one game before contest, the players that were in the marching band and in the football team take off their pads. They'd leave their, you know, the pants part on to take off their pads and march in the band. Wow. And one year, talk, well, tiny band, I was 50-some people in the band, went to their little con, we went to our contest and, the, and you know, the head football coach drove the bus for the band director, so... The whole football team came and watched us. So I, I was raised in a totally different environment. Athletics, band, theater, whatever it may be. You know, we were such a small school that everybody just really did everything. And so I just thought that's what, that's just what everybody did. Mm -hmm. So when I ended up teaching at a high school, outside of Fort Worth, Haltom High School, uh, the, the size of the school was bigger than my town. It was 2,700 oh, students. You know, I just thought that's what everybody did. And, and we pretty much connected with the athletic department and created an environment where the arts and athletics and academics really, you know, really uh, flourished together. It was a very interesting. I was a very lucky person. Very lucky. Reading your bio, I understand that that time in Halton, you, you were quite decorated at that particular point in time. Well, there were some honors that came your way and, and that you brought to the program. Well, they, people have been very, very kind. I worked on the most amazing team. In fact, uh, I, I joined with who, a person who's like my brother now, but has, has been one of the most significant influences in my life, is Greg Hall. Now, the reason why that's important is Greg Hall is a graduate of the University of Houston. He came here. He was in Bill Moffitt's band. He was here with, with uh, uh, Mr. Matthews, who was the, really the, the first band director at the University of Houston in the, in, in the School of Music, and who really put the, the, the first wind ensemble and marching band. You'll see his bands. Uh, from the old days at the stadium. It's really incredible. So I was connected at U of H, th th to U of H, by my first job at Halton. But Halton was an incredible experience. Um, the, the people there, it was just such a conducive environment for student success. And I think that's where I, I really became uh, passionate about the, the art of teaching. And um, that's why I, I became connected to U of H, because it was just 
it was quite obvious in the state of Texas, and then I come to find out later nationally and internationally, the School of Music, and in particular, Eddie Green and the band program were something very unique. Uh, and I, not, not everybody realizes this. I know, like you said, everybody sees me in the marching band. But there is an, a, a foundation that most people don't know that is really respected nationally and internationally in the band world. And well, it's, a, it's marvelous. And you have a marvelous facility in the Morris School of Music yeah. here and the, pro, and the performance hall that you have. Oh, I mean, so talk about some of the draws, not only Eddie Green, but what were the things that drew you here to Houston? Well, you know, first of all, um, I, I'll, I'll be very honest. They were courting me. I was teaching in an area near North Texas. Mm -hmm. So the University of North Texas was, I wouldn't say courting, but that was a little egotistical. They were interested in their master's program and successful band directors coming there. So they, I would start my, I started my master's at UT, uh, you, you, North Texas, not UT, God forbid. I'm sorry, <laughs> but U, U, UNT, and uh, and every time because I'd been studying with Eddie Green, every time they'd say, well, what would the University of Houston do? And pretty soon it was just obvious to me that <laughs> uh, this was the place to be. But the things that drew me here, uh, I, I will tell you right off. Uh, and, and yes, I, I, it's, it's not just Eddie Green, but the School of Music and, 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 and his leadership. It was not about anything other than we want to provide an opportunity for me at the time to do graduate work, to continue teaching, to, to have the opportunities that a major university would give to someone like me, but also allow me to still continue with my job. And um, they, it was, it was just this very um, giving and support system that w seems so different than even, even the University of Oklahoma. It was all about what can we do to help this man, a, a, a young man at the time, uh, become successful or more successful in his area of, of, of teaching. And that was from everything. That wasn't just in the school of music. That was in every aspect. And, you know, that is, I believe that's really... Uh, you know, a, an extraordinary aspect that drew me here, that, that, that it really was a sense of community, but you didn't have to be right here to be a part of the community. And it was a sense of um, uh, pride that the university had in what they offered to the students. It wasn't, it wasn't the most, um, I wouldn't say it was the most, um, the bright shining star that I think it's become now. When I first started, it was, it was far more about we are just we are focused on what we can do for our students, and I, I, we still are. But now we're starting to expand into, into such a global recognition and state recognition. It's just it's adding an enormous amount of credibility to our degrees.